it is and you're going you're going to meet someone that you that you didn't meet uh when you were younger and you got to set him up right see see thank god that he he swooped in and snatched me and and he made my 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 latter days better than the former days you, you know but but what i did in in the 90s set me up for something else in the 2000s but God but God but God right and so and so you have to make sure that you know you don't get caught up in iniquities and lifestyles and things that cause you to go away from a God-given purpose because a God-given purpose always leads to a God-given destiny right and, you know, it's funny, me and Kenyatta was sitting in, in, that's funny, right? Me and Kenyatta was sitting in the office today, and I was talking about that I wanted to be a movie director, and I would have been a good one. I just, you know, yeah, I know. But I didn't, I wasn't pursuing this. I had this, this wasn't in mind. And so because I was pursuing something else, and God had something else in mind for me, I could have kept exerting my will over God's will, but, um... I might not have ran into the peace, joy, love, long-suffering, temperance. I might have not ran into repentance. I might not even have ran into salvation uh, without me following God's purpose for my life. And so you got to make sure that your decisions are lined up with, because your decisions have to be uh, purpose-filled, anointed, spirit-led decisions at all times. And whatever you know about God, you need to apply, whether it's, it's minute, right, a little bit, or a lot. Whatever you know about God, if you apply it to your life, it will excel you into a different place of, of purpose. Anything you know about God, anything you know about God has always been designed for your, his purpose for your life. Because you may think, well, everybody prays, right? Everybody. God tells everyone to pray. But he doesn't talk to all of us the same in prayer, right? He tells all of us to read his word, right? And so you might sit down and just read like it's a novel, but within that, he doesn't speak to us through his word all the same. The meaning does not change, but, but the revelation may be tailor-made for my purpose. You see what I'm saying? And where he leads me in the word may not be where he leads you in the word. And so it's better to be obedient to the things of God and listen and tune your ear to the things of God because I'm telling you, it's in your hearing, right, where your next level and your, and your, and your exaltations of life are at. How you are tuned towards God will be how your life excels in this world. And so, and so, and so there are successful people in the world that, that do not know God. We know that, right? We know it. But, but how do you measure su success based on significance towards God? Because if a person is insignificant towards God, regardless of how much success they have created in the world, right, because God has given us creative power, 
And so because we have creative power, it doesn't matter how much success you create in the world, if you're insignificant towards the things of God, your success can't go to heaven with you, and it cannot go to the grave in hell with you. So your success is just for today and not necessarily for eternity. But when you become significant towards God, you now take everything that you have in this life on into eternity with you. And, that's, and that's, that's what it's about, being significant towards God. So, so I might not know a lot about God. I might not know anything about God. But we all heard pray, right? So, you know, I don't know what to say. You know, Shirley, Shirley didn't know what to say when she first started praying. She would say, hi, Jesus. I hope you're having a good day. I mean, his day's always good, right? But, you know, she's like, Pastor, I didn't know what to say. I didn't know what to say, right? And I knew Shirley had that problem, so we meet every Thursday, right? So I just started saying, Shirley, pray. Open us up in prayer, right? And she was like, I didn't get to practice, right? <laughs> and it's just five of us, right? But now when I tell her to pray, her prayers are anointed. They're spirit-filled. They have content. They're, 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 it, it's because all you have to do is take the first step with God. All you have to do is take the first step with God. He, he's going to be there to carry every... Oh, man, let me tell you something. When I came to Jesus, I didn't know anything about him, right? I thought I did. I thought I, thought I, knew, I, thought I knew everything. But I found out I didn't know anything when it comes to the things of God. And he just walked me through. Now I know everything. <laughs> so we've been talking about... So we've been talking about speak to your heart, right? I, I'm, I'm ready to wrap this up, and, and I'm waiting on God to, to help me with it. But it's been, this is part eight. We've been seven weeks talking about speak to your heart. And in the last three weeks, I haven't been talking about words. I've been really talking about what's going on in your soul. And the reason why I have to talk about what's going on in your soul, because it's what's in the soul. The soul is, right, the mind, the will, the intellection, intellect, heart, and imagination, right? So if this is what the soul is, then I have to deal with your soul because you can be a parakeet and talk churchy things, but if there's no faith behind it, if there's no soulish activity geared towards it, you're just running at the mouth. You're just practicing this thing and not really believing it. So I'm trying to do some rewiring inside the soul in order for you to speak into this world and speak these things out of your heart. And it says, as a man speaketh, so is he, right? And so this is what I want you to do because, because I, can, I can church it until I make it. I can fake it until I make it, right? But, but faith doesn't have to present itself the wrong way. As soon as, listen, the woman with the issue of blood, right? She has said, it said that she had went to many doctors. She has spent all the money she had. She tried everything that she could do, right? She said, if I but touch the hem of his garment, right? There's a hundred people around Jesus, everybody's strong and at him, touching him. He said, who touched me? I can hear Elder North saying to me right now, what do you mean, Pastor, who touched you? Yeah, look at all these people hanging on you, touching you. He said, no, I felt virtue. He said, I felt something leave me. See, faith, faith, faith is something that has no time limit to it, right? Faith is the some, some, faith is something that exists beyond time, right? It exists before time, and it's going to exist beyond time, right? And so we don't have to wait on processes and things when it comes to faith as soon as we believe it is so, right? God said, look, listen, listen. God says in Hebrew 11, he inspired the writer of Hebrews, says, faith is the sum of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. For by it, the elders obtained the good report. For we know, right, we know that the worlds were framed by the word of God, right? So if you go back to, to Genesis 1 and when God spoke, right, we know that the words, it says, faith is the sum of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen, right? So God had to create out of something which was faith, right? So now he has this substance on the inside of him and as he speaks because he knows that what he speaks comes to pass it is good right so this tells me that as I line my life up with God as I line my soul up with God right as I line my soul up with God now I imitate God not just words but also soulishly 
right? So now that I'm a follower of Christ and I line my mind, my will, my intellect, and my imagination and heart towards God, now that I line these things up with God, I should be having some godly results, right? Because, because a lot of times we'll go to church but don't allow the church to get in us, right? We won't allow God to dictate our paths. He won't direct our paths. We'll attend church, but we won't take from church what we learned. And by not taking from church what we learned, we're wondering why these two, these two lives, these, this straddling of life doesn't line up with each other. And the reason why is, is because you're not allowing, because this thing's not a magic wand. Faith is not a magic wand. Faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. Faith is perceiving as real fact what is not revealed to the senses, right? And so because of that, I have to make sure this life and this thing I desire lines up totally with the things of God because if it does not line up with the things of God, now I'm tricking my soul. And as I trick my soul, I'm speaking like I want something from God, but I'm living contrary to it. And my soul saying, wait a minute, do I lean to the flesh or do I lean to the spirit? You make up my mind. And when you make up my mind, we're going to manifest everything that you need. Right? So Jesus says, coming back from cursing the fig tree, right? He says, have faith in God constantly. Constantly. Listen, man, listen, listen, listen. Now this, now this, this is tricky, right? Because when you're not being alert to the things of God, there's so many other voices starting to speak. So many. See, see. See, there's, there's the first voice, and the first voice might not speak all the time. And so you have to find yourself being faithful to what you heard from God. Because if God gives you instructions, right? Listen, have you had, I, I worked for two kinds of bosses, right? I had one boss that would say, Jamal, I need you to go do X, Y, and Z. And then he, that's it. That's it. He going to follow up with you a month later. Did you do X, Y, and Z? No, okay, okay. When you come back and you want your way, oh, no, no, I gave you instructions. I had another boss that kept coming around saying, Jamal, I need you to do X, Y, and Z. Jamal, did you do X, Y, and Z? Jamal, did you do X, Y, and Z? I'm the boss. I'm the boss. God doesn't have to show himself as the boss. God gives instructions how you honor the instructions, how you honor God will show you faithful or not, Right? And so now, when you get instructions from God, you have to maintain faithfulness towards God until you get some more instructions, right? So now this having faith in God constantly is this abiding faith. It's an oris word. Oris means perpetual. It's a verb that we continually do, right? And so now, if you're not alert to the things of God, there's this second voice that creeps in. See, God gave Adam instructions. Don't eat from that tree, right? Leave that one alone. You can have, look, 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 Adam, step back. Look at everything that you can have. Adam said, dang, I get all that? And then he didn't come to Adam, he come to Eve, right? But see, let me tell you something, men, you are responsible for your homes, right? If, if anything other than the second voice creeps in, you have to deal with the second voice, even if it's to someone else. Men of God, you are the head of your house, whether it's just you or family. And when you cannot let the second voice creep in and deter you from what God had told you to do, right? So now, this, this he, Adam's not alert, and he says, Eve says, look, come here, let me show you something. He looks at it. He said, man, that thing looks good. The lust of the eyes. He said, and it'll probably be good to eat. The lust of the flesh, right? He said, mmm. So the second voice deals with sin. The second voice deals with reason. The first voice deals with faith. The second voice deals with reasoning and lust. It is going to appeal to the flesh, and it's going to appeal to your until your carnal intellect. See, there's a, there's, a, there's, a, there's a spiritual intellect 
that, that is only obtained by faith because faith is a sort of knowledge, but it's a higher sort of knowledge, right? And so now, check this out. So now these two voices are going to speak according to what you are most prone to. If you're prone to a spiritual life, then the first voice is going to speak and everything that comes after it, you may ponder it because the flesh has an appetite. Sin has an appetite. The, the, the flesh has an appetite. And so you're going to ponder it. But when it does not line up with God, now you have to make a decision. You have to make a decision. Okay, wait a minute. Wait, 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 wait. But this sounds right. This feels right. And I've been waiting on God for a long time. And man... <laughs> He ain't showing up. Well, I know what God said, but uh, this feels too good. This seems too right. God, we're going to work it out my way. And see, and see, God honors faithfulness. God honors faithfulness. He does not honor unfaithfulness. And let me tell you something. Anything that is not of faith is sin. That's it. Anything that is not of faith is sin. And so you operate by one or the other, either by faith or by, the, by, by your flesh. But one is only going to dictate this, this sinful mindset, right? Not the penalty of sin, but the sinful mindset. And you're going to wonder why I'm not having success is because what's in a man comes out of a man. And if you don't deal with what's going on, on your, inside your soul, eventually, no matter how hard you work, eventually, no matter how hard you work, this sin is eventually going to present itself again because you have never dealt with it. The Bible says, casting down every imagination and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God, bringing it into obedience to Christ. And so now that these second voices, whether it's your own reasoning, whether it's, an, whether it's a spirit, a devil, or whatever it is, what, it, what has to happen is you have to tune your ear towards God and not towards yourself or an enemy. Because if you don't cast these imaginations down, if you don't deal with this second voice, you'll find yourself living the second voice and find yourself in prayer, find yourself in worship, find yourself in church, but not and wondering why these things are not happening is because you're still listening to the wrong voice. And so that's why having faith in God is so important because it must be abiding, right? So, so let's deal with this thing. Romans 12, Romans 12, come on, come on, catch up with me, computer. It says, be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed. Metamufu, right? Transformed. Metamufu, metamorphosis. Metamorphosis. The, the butterfly is a caterpillar, right? But until the butterfly metamorph metamorphosis, it can't fly. Listen, the butterfly is nothing but a squirmy worm with beautiful wings, right? And so if that's the case, be you transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove what is good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Right. And so and so because of this, you have to make sure that when you're conformed, you recognize and share the act of redemption accomplished in the death resurrection of Jesus Christ means the renewing of the mind. So now so now check this out. These voices, right, these these two voices that are speaking to you because 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 you have trained yourself on sin. We all have, not just you, we, let me use that word. We have trained our life and have been conditioned towards sin, right? From, from cradle to the grave, sin wants to shape your life, right? So now when you come into this relationship to, a, to recognize and share the act of redemption, redemption means to be bought back from sin, right? So now I hear that I'm redeemed. I'm told that I'm no longer a sinner. I'm a saint, right? I'm told that Jesus will fix it, right? He's going to work it out, right? Jesus is going to work it out. He already worked it out. See, this is a difference. He already worked it out. The day he died, it was all fixed, right? And so now we have to share and accomplish in the death and resurrection. The mind is not necessarily good. It must be renewed. So if the mind must be renewed, 
then I must allow the renewal, right? Okay, 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 ladies, ladies, have you ever cut your hair off, right? There's a process when you're trying to grow it back, right? It, it, that in-between place, you don't like it, right? Yeah, you're like, there's a place you're trying to get to, right? There's a place that you're trying to get to, but because you can't get to it, but hold on, hold on, she says, a process. She says, a process, right? With the hair, it is. It's a growth process. But in order to get there, you got to allow it. You got to have a mindset to get to the place to where you want to be, right? Because if you don't allow, if you don't allow the mind, the mind, the renewing of the mind to take place. The Bible says that through the washing of the word, right? So, so now when the word goes forth, you're responsible what goes in your ear gates. Once it goes into your ear gates, you are responsible to do something about that which you've heard pertaining to the things of God. See, this is why you must be transformed. Okay, so now, so now we all get this mindset. Lord, fix me, right? Listen, he fixed you 2,000 years ago. The day you said, I do to Jesus, he gave you all things that pertain to life and godliness. There is nothing else that you need. You have to allow what he's done, right, to recognize and share, right, to recognize that I'm saved now, and now that I'm saved, right, I share in this thing with Jesus. Because if you do not, and you're waiting for a process, and you have lust of other things, deep lust. See, 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 listen, some of us have accomplished some things. Some of us have overcome some things, right? But there's some things that we still secretly lust for. And when you secretly lust for something and you don't deal with it, it's eventually going to manifest itself because now, because now, the desire, listen, the desire towards the thing becomes greater than the desire towards God. See, this is repentance. This is, this, this, this is repentance, people. This is, this is repentance. And a lot of times what happens is repentance starts here, right? And it's finished here. You're obligated now that you've recognized that you have repented to take a step, the, the steps of repentance, right? Listen, repentance, see, this is why Jesus had to do what he needed to do, right? Because people will say, well, they have never repented from that thing, and that's why they still do it. No, when they turned from the world and turned towards Jesus and accepted him as Lord and Savior, they repented from all their sins. They've turned from their wicked ways, but the desire, hey, 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 yes, <sighs> right, yes, no, Jesus, please help me, please, see, listen, see, when, 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 it's, when it's a please help me, see, I want to make sure that you leave here strengthened with understanding, when it's a please help me, Jesus, you've already lost, when the mindset comes, nah, I'm free from sin, I'm no longer, I'm, I'm a new creature in Christ Jesus. I no longer have to deal with this because that dealt with the person that did not go through the metamorphosis. He's trying to, they're trying to speak to the caterpillar, but I got wings now. And so because I have wings, I'm able to now exceed and go above that which I've desired. Because if I don't, I find myself crawling and creeping back to my sins when I should be living above these things. That's why I told you last week, you can't live lower than the call. You have to exceed this because if you do not exceed this, you find yourself, listen, the Bible says this, a man who returns to a sin is like a dog that returns back to vomit. So, so, so look, so look, this renewing of the mind, right? By the renewing of, of your mind, the conscious, thoughtful, or reflective moral and religious spiritual life, this position is constantly renewed, in part restored, and in part developed. 
So check this out. So check this out. A disposition, right? A disposition is this. Before Jesus, my disposition was sin. I, I now developed in drug dealing, right? This is what I did. So now, because of the disposition of sin, my desires and all these things produced a lifestyle. It produced the life that I lived, right? So now that I'm in Christ Jesus, I have to allow a new disposition, right, in order to be renewed, restored, and developed in its mastery over the natural part of life. Listen, listen. All of us got to hang up, right? That's natural. Do you, let me ask you, let me ask you churchy people something. You know, I don't think I got any churchy people in here. I ain't going to lie. There ain't too much religion up in here. We just love Jesus. Amen. But do you see someone doing something that you used to do and does it make you disgusted? <laughs> Does it make you disgusted? Well, well, if you take this mindset, well, sinners do what they're supposed to do. They sin, right? So then that tells me that if I'm the righteousness of God by faith, then, listen, did the person become a sinner because they made a choice? Come on, answer me, y'all. Huh? No born into sin, shaping into iniquity, right? Did you become righteous because you made a decision? Oh, I got a good Bible study class here, boy. This is my Bible study. They showing up. So if you didn't make a decision to become righteous, what, what happened? You had to be born again, right? So now that I'm born by faith, right? Now that I'm renewed, regenerated by faith, born again, right? So now, listen, I make my decisions based on my position, my disposition, and not necessarily my desires. Because my desires may not line up with God right away. And so because my desires don't line up with God right away, I have to make sure that my, my thinker is being changed and being renewed and being developed. So now when conviction set in, Conviction is not, listen, conviction is not God beating you. It's, conviction is God telling you, I need you to go in a different direction. But as a man think of, and so is he. So now, listen, so now as you're pondering and thinking, because we all think and life comes from thoughts, right? We produce life from what we think. You have to take this stuff captive. You have to deal with this stuff. You got to pull it down. You got to have a great relationship with yourself. You got to be accountable to you. Because listen, listen, at the end of the day, you can't say, God, why didn't you intervene? If you was God, why'd you allow me to do it? You can't say that. You can't say that. That's not for you to say. For what you to do, for what it is for you to do, that you turn towards God, right? So check this out. The transformation and shaping of the life of the Christian are determined not by external worldly forms, but by this inward renewing or renewing and sending to the whole of that external life through the productive power of the Spirit. So now the Spirit of God wants to produce something in me. I have to allow this renewal to take place. If I do not allow this renewal to play, see, so many people come into my office and say, Pastor, I'm trying. I'm hoping this is going to work for me. I can't understand why I keep doing this and it's not being fixed. It's because there's somewhere that you're blocking the pushing of the Holy Spirit. There's somewhere where the Holy Spirit is trying to move you into something else, another aspect of life, but there's somewhere where you're blocking the Holy Spirit because this stuff works. But listen, it does not work. It does not work by you doing. It works by you believing. You can't, you can't work your way into this thing. You got to believe God. Because, see, listen, it's not by my might, right? But by your spirit, oh God. 
right? So now, so now every time I'm trying to work at this thing and do this thing and trying to accomplish that what God tells me to do, when I just stop and allow God to do it and he leads and guides my path, as he leads and guides my path, he's already set things in motion. He's already set things in order. All I'm doing is going around and reaping that which he's already placed. You see what I'm saying? I'm already just doing that. But in the process, I can't see two feet in front of me. I'm only allowed to grab that which I can touch. And so now that I'm only allowed to grab what I can touch, it's the experiences that I've already had that lets me know that there's more experience down the road. And as there's more experience down the road, I'm going to trust God and live according to what he said. See, but when you can't see, but when you can't see, you stop because man is so used to this three-dimensional world. Faith is perceiving is real fact what is not revealed to the senses. Faith is perceiving as real fact what is not revealed to the senses. And so because you're so used to seeing, even though God came through and it was only two feet in front of you, you're not willing to take that next step because you can't see. You're not trusting God. See, faith is also trust, reliance, assurance, title deed. Title deed. Check this out. Blood bought. Blood washed. Sanctified. Set apart. Redeemed. Child of God. Hey, hey when, you, when you were growing up in the house, did you say, can I turn my light on? No, you went into your bedroom and you turned the light on. Right? Your parents didn't come in the room and say, you sit in the dark until I tell you to turn the light on. Did I tell you? No, they didn't do that. You walked in your room, you turned the light on, right? Kingdom kids, title deed. If I'm of the kingdom and I'm in the house, everything that is in the kingdom is mine. As he is in heaven, so am I in the earth, right? And so if he's in heaven reigning, then that tells me that I can be in, in him reigning as he is in heaven as I am on the earth. And so this tells me that even though I don't see it, right, because, because I know I don't have to wait to see the pluck. I'm already preparing. I'm all, listen, mentally, spiritually, soulishly, I'm already preparing to grab the next thing that God has already placed for me. If you listen, listen, listen to me, listen to me, y'all. This is the mindset of a Christian. Listen, the reason why we struggle is because we don't have the mind of a Christian. He says, I have the mind of Christ. A Christian is to be a follower and an a imitator of Jesus. So if I have the mind of Christ, where was Christ ever hindered in his thinking? There's one time I can think about. When it was time to go to the cross, he said, you want me to die for all these crazy people? <laughs> Listen, is there another way? And then he said, wait a minute. If it be thy will. See, that's casting down imagination. Listen, can you, can you, can you know who you are? Jesus knew exactly who he was. And to submit himself to tragedy for us. As a Christian, you must know who you are because if the tragedy went on him, the tragedy does not have to come on us. That's what he died for. And so now that I have the mind of Christ and I'm allowing this renewal, it's not the dictations of this external life, this three-dimensional world that rules me. Because if that's the case, I should be balled up in a corner somewhere. But because my spirit is ruled by God and dictated by this kingdom of God, and I lean on Holy Spirit. And so now that I lean on Holy Spirit, he now directs my path. He now helps me deal with the thought life. Because if I don't deal with the thought life, because listen, when you don't deal with the thought life and you don't deal with these issues of life, Next thing you know, you start speaking according to what's going on in the brain and not what's going on in the kingdom. 
And listen, and listen, you're going to have what you say. It says, by the fruit of the lips, a man will have what he says. I can't take it. I just can't do it no more. I don't know how I'm going to kill it. I just can't. Yeah, that's what you're going to have because you most definitely have faith in that area. You believe that. Listen. The cliche, it turned into a cliche, and it never was. No weapon formed against me shall be able to prosper. When, you, when that's not a sermon filler, and that's a part of your spirit, when that's a part of who you are, that gives you a conquering mindset. That gives you a king and queen kind of mindset, right? Because any king, any true king, is going to sit on the throne and say, there's nothing that can come against this kingdom. And so, and so when you know that you're a child of God and he's almighty God, he's El Shaddai, there's nothing that exalts itself over him and you are of the kingdom. When you say no weapon formed against me shall be able to prosper, that tells me that that thing has been formed, that thing is coming against me, but there's no way that it can prosper. And when it can, listen, listen, you give fuel to the, to, the, to the weapon by how you believe how detrimental or how weak the weapon is. You give fuel to it. Because if you think that this thing coming against you is going to prosper, if you don't ever deal with this thing, you don't ever deal with it. As much as you sit in church, as much as you pray and worship God, the moment that you start speaking as if this thing is going to prosper, you add an ammunition in a gun. You might as well shoot yourself because you're now speaking in a different manner. And see, and see, you're thinking, well, I'm not God. How am I going to let this happen? God gave Adam dominion. Adam lost the dominion and Jesus died to give it back to us. You do not know how great and how powerful you really are until you totally submit to the will of God. When you totally submit and give your life over to the will of God, you'll see manifested power inside of you that you could not even fathom to bring off on yourself because he will do exceedingly, abundantly, above all that I'm able to ask or think according to the power that works within me. See, the Holy Spirit, listen, listen to me. The Holy Spirit has been given to every believer. The Holy Spirit is now, as you are a Christian, is given over to you and resides inside of you. The problem is this. We don't allow the feeling of the Holy Spirit to take us over. We suppress Holy Spirit. We hold down the truth of the word and we suppress him. Now he indwells in us, but the feeling where the giftings come, where the power comes, where the anointing comes, is when you allow Holy Spirit to now lead and guide your life. There has to be a productive power of the Spirit. So, so that you may prove, right? Be not conformed to this world, be transformed to this world, that you may prove this good and acceptable, right? The Christian life should not receive its development by means of an external legislation. That means, listen, don't come in here saying, Pastor, I did good today. You told me to do this, and I did it. I'm not, listen, I'm not, I'm not the Christian police. God needs to acknowledge you. But by the inward one, which is directed by spiritual proving and self-determination. All right? Spiritual proving, try the spirit by the spirit. Is my spirit lined up with the things of God? Let me test this thing out. Let me, let, me, let me test this thing out towards God. God, are you pleased? Listen, are you pleased with this? Okay, so listen, let's, let's deal with this. Because when we accomplish something, because we're based on, man is based on a reward system. We're just animal. If the mouse, ca- if the mouse goes around the wheel, you give him cheese, he's going to jump on the wheel every day. We, we're so used to rewards. We go to God and we say, God, I did X, Y, and Z. I've been found faithful. Are you pleased? Right? Okay, okay, check this out. I'm faithful right now. Most of y'all know my brother died two days ago, right? I find myself, no, 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 you don't have to pity. I'm good. My brother's saved. 
but, I, but, but I'm here, right? God, I still did what you told me to do, even though all this external stuff is going on in my life. Are you pleased? Is it faith, son, or is it works? If it's works, no, I ain't pleased with it. You should be doing it. I told you to do it. If it's by faith, yes. Yes, I'm pleased. That's the only way we please God, but by faith. So you got to get out, you got to get out of your mind that when you do something good towards God, that he's pleased with it. He's pleased with your faith and not your works. This is what we should be doing. We should pray. We should do good for people. We should love other people. We should be gentle and kind. We should not cuss. We should not lie. We should not steal. God's not pleased with that. He's given you a new disposition. He's given you a new life. You're living in this life. You're not the old man. You're the new man. You live this life on purpose. You make decisions based on this life. But he's not pleased with it. He's pleased with the fact that you accepted Jesus. So, so Meyer appropriately says, in the unrenewed man, this proving is altogether foreign to the activity of his conscience. So you get saved, right? And you say, well, what's my next steps? What am I supposed to do now, pastor? Right? Well, most pastors say, well, go, come to Bible study. Right? Come to Bible study and come to church. Don't ever leave this place. Serve God with your whole heart. Well, what does that mean? I'm coming to church. I'm coming to Bible study. Serving God with my own heart, and I'm not leaving this place. But I can't stop stealing. I can't stop. I can't stop lying. I can't stop fornicating. What's what's going on? You know why? Because this has not changing. You're still working. You're still listen, listen. In order for me to lose weight, it's going to take more than sweating on Sunday right here. <laughs> You know why I haven't lost no weight and I talk about it every week? My mind ain't been renewed yet. The times I do lose weight is because I'm working. I haven't changed, I haven't changed the way I think. I haven't changed, I haven't submitted this to God. I covet, you know, bread and butter, peanut butter. Ruby did that. She put a whole jar of peanut butter on Facebook this morning, yesterday, and it just tempted me all over again. In the unrenewed man. So can you be regenerated and not be renewed? Can you be born again and not be renewed? See, see, this is where religion questions salvation. This is where religious mindsets question salvation. Because the religious person says, the religious person says, well, I've accomplished so much. Why do they still have, if they would be led by the spirit of God, they wouldn't be struggling in that. If they would just let, so their salvation can't be real. See, regeneration has nothing to do with sanctification. Sanctification means that I've been set apart. But within, within human, within man, it's not ceremonial. I mean, the pulpit is a ceremonial spot. It's been sanctified for the ministry of the word, right? But for us, this is a progressive sanctification. We go from faith to faith and glory to glory. And so because of this, we've been sanctified and set apart. But until we start dealing with this thinker, until we start dealing with this mindset, I'm going to be saved and still lying, still cussing, still overindulging in so many things because I have not changed the mind. But see, most people, because of religion, get into this place and question their own salvation. And then, and then because of a hard religious finger or, or a foot on their neck, they run from church and begin to say, I got my own relationship with God. And they do it, and they're right, but they do it without no information. 
And if we, the church, would just be who we were called to be or those who point to the way of salvation, who are you to say that that person has not been called out of the world? The ecclesia, the church, we are the ecclesia. And some of us may make up part of, of God's beautiful eyes. And some of us may be just a, a, a hangnail on his finger. But it's all part of the body. And who are we to say this person does not have salvation based on their activity? Because you don't know how many nights they may be crying. All they need is for one of you to love them and point them to the way of Jesus. And discipleship is so important, man. I'm almost done. I'm going to let y'all go home. What is good? What is good? What is pleasing to God? Equals righteous faith. This is the principle of perfection. Look, look at this. Look at this. Woo! Listen, how many of y'all are perfect in this room? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Oh, no, 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 no. You don't get to join in. You don't get to join in. Can you get any more saved? You can't get any more saved. So, so if you're not perfect, right? If you're not perfect, then um, what do you got to do to become perfect? You got to work at it, right? <laughs> after, all, after a whole hour of preaching, y'all going to tell me y'all still got to work. What is pleasing to God equals righteous faith. This is the principle of perfection. When the woman with the issue of blood touched the hem of his garment, and he said, I felt virtue leave me, right? That word virtue in Greek is translated to excellence. She was in, an, she was in a, a, a condition that was not excellent. She went in her, in her infirmities and touched his garment. Listen, listen. Feel, listen, by Jewish law, she was not to touch a teacher. She was not to be around anyone. She was to be casted out and set aside. Whew. Listen to this. In her filthy, pertaining to law, in her filthy self, she comes in and touches that which is perfect. She aligns her faith up with perfection. And now he says, I felt excellence leave me. How? Listen, listen. See, this is the mindset. Because we have flaws, we don't consider ourselves excellent. But see, you don't get a blessed position by still being a sinner, which is not excellent. You get, a, you get this blessed position by being the righteousness of God. The only way you can become the righteousness of God is by faith, right? Abraham believed God. Believe God. That's it. And it was accounted. It was laid to his account as righteousness. So now, what is pleasing to God is this righteous faith. This is the principle of perfection. But what is proper conduct and and for the church is in Galatians 10, as we have therefore opportunity. Listen, 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 listen. Don't don't read that yet. Let's stay at the comma. You've been given opportunity. You didn't make this decision for Jesus. You did not choose me, but I chose you and ordained you that you should go and bring forth fruit and that your fruit shall remain. John uh, 15, 10, uh, what is that? John 15, oh man, it's my favorite scripture. Escape me. Anyway, it's in John 15, I think. As we have, therefore, opportunity, how you manipulate this position means everything. Christian position. I'm a Christian. 
I check the box as Christian. Check the box. You go fill out the application. Are you Muslim, Christian, blah, blah, blah. You check it like it's a race. Check, check, right? But for us felons, when we come to that, when we come to that box, you be like, but I'm renewed, God. I'm changed. I don't want to show them by my pet. But anyway, right, that's something different. Right? It says, let us do good unto all men, especially unto them who are the household of faith. Let us do good unto all men, especially unto them who are the household of faith. The benefit is reaped in our lives. What is good is pleasing to God by righteous faith, this is the principle of perfection. Say, I'm the righteousness of God. I have been given the principle of perfection. I dwell in a perfect place. I am the child of God. In him he lives. In, in him I live. Y'all just look. <laughs> and in him I dwell. <laughs> And in him I have my very being. I am the righteousness of God. I've been given a righteous position. It is the principle of perfection. I am a perfect child of God. And I will not settle for anything less. Come on, give God praise. Come on, give God praise.